Hey YouTube, it's the test lead. And today's video is becoming an SDET slash automation engineer. So it's a new year, new you, and thinking about a career change. You saw a few ads for automation and testing. You're thinking, how could I possibly get into that field one day? This video will give you the step-by-step -step guide. This video will cover first, what do SDET slash automation engineers slash automation testers do and what are their roles. Next it'll cover what programming languages do you need for becoming an automation engineer. And from now on, I'm gonna say just automation engineer, but that incorporates automation engineer, SDET, automated software testers, QA automation, all those roles into one. So from now I'm just gonna say automation engineers. Next this video will cover what are the education and coding requirements to become an automation engineer. With automation engineering, coding is a definite requirement, but I'll talk about more specifics later. Next, the software testing concepts that you need to know. After that, the testing tools that you need to know. And finally, applying and getting your first automation engineer job. I will make future videos going into further detail about each topic discussed in this video, so stay tuned. So first, what do automation engineers actually do? When you first hear about automation, you're probably thinking about big robots replacing manual jobs that people used to do. Well, you're partially right about this. First off, with automation, everything isn't big robots, but instead it could be a small computer. And the second part you're partially right about is, it's not gonna fully replace humans. It makes human jobs a lot easier and more efficient to do. But who designs these computers and tells them what to do? Insert automation engineers. Automation engineers write the code that tells the computer what to do in an automated fashion. One of the other terms used for automation engineers is SDET, which stands for Software Developer Engineer and Test, meaning you're still a software developer, but you're just part of the testing team. The test that you would create and automate can be as simple as calling a backend API call and checking a response code to longer system tests that go end to end. And I know what you're thinking, why not just manually test everything? A few reasons. First off, everything should initially be manual tested. After that, any test that might be repeated in future cycles should be automated and add to a regression suite. Automation allows for faster and more efficient testing. It may take a manual person three minutes to click around through a web page and go through an actual test, whereas an automation script can run that in a couple of seconds. Also, human tests are subject to distractions and human error, whereas an automation test is going to run exactly what you program it to. And most importantly, you don't need someone supervising it while it's running. You just press a button to execute it, come back in a minute or two, and it's done, and you see the results. And you're probably thinking also, why don't we just automate it from the beginning instead of manually testing it? As I said, manually testing something may take three minutes, but setting up the initial repository for an automation test might take a few hours. So that's why you gotta see the pros and cons of what's more efficient. You're gonna test something just one time, just manual test it. But if something's gonna be reoccurring, then use automation testing for it. Our next subject is education and coding requirements. Traditionally, most automation engineers have at least a bachelor's degree in computer science. This gives you the core fundamentals for coding. However, as access to quality alternative education becomes more abundant nowadays, this is no longer a hard requirement for certain companies. Certain companies no longer require a physical degree from a university, but if you have like a boot camp or a self-taught, they may give you a shot now. Certain companies care more about your experience now instead of where you just got your diploma from. Because a lot of times, for certain diplomas, it's just memorizing information and regurgitating it. Whereas if you're self-taught, maybe you actually understand the information better and can apply it. So the whole process in the real world is not just repeating information that you heard, but actually understanding it and applying it to real world examples. In order to become an automation engineer, you must learn how to code. Prioritize learning an object-oriented programming language. This includes Python, c -sharp, Java, and many more. Once you learn one object-oriented programming language, the rest of them come easy to pick up because they all have the same core principles. If you are completely new to programming, I would suggest taking Python first because that's the most syntactically easy to pick up. A lot of it is like the English language, so it's the most easy to understand and learn. Then from there, you can go to Java or C-sharp. But as I said, if it's your first programming language, learn Python first. Although it will be very helpful, you do not need a degree or a bootcamp to learn how to code. You can do Google searches and Twitter and YouTube searches 
and see a lot of self-taught engineers at some of the top companies. The difference is in a university and a bootcamp is structured learning. Whereas if you're self-taught, you have to be very disciplined. You can use websites such as YouTube, Udemy, and Skillshare to get the core fundamentals of a programming language. Next is SQL. No matter what job you have in the automation field, you have to know SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's how you access a database and get information from it or make edits to it. A database is where all information is stored related to the company. In a database, the information is then usually stored in separate containers called tables. To access these databases and containers, you must use SQL. Some popular data management systems that use SQL include Oracle, Cypress, and Microsoft SQL Server. With SQL, especially in the beginning when you first get a job, you need to focus on just the basic commands, which are select, insert, update, create, delete, drop, and join. Join is the most challenging one. You probably use that the least, or besides join, focus on the other ones right away. Learning how to use these commands is more than you'll need for any basic job that you get in the field for automation. Next, what you need to focus on are software testing concepts. These software testing concepts are the same for both manual testers as well as automation testers. The whole thing is you have to know how to speak the language and understand the vocabulary of testing. The key concepts to start with here are the software development lifecycle, the software testing lifecycle, software testing methodologies, functional testing, including unit testing, integration testing, system testing, sanity, smoke, and interface testing, as well as regression and acceptance testing. And then we have our non-functional testing. This includes performance, load, stress, volume, security, compatibility testing, install, recovery, reliability, and usability testing. And finally, our last concepts are black box, gray box, and white box testing. The next step in our roadmap is testing tools. We will divide this section into two different parts, test management tools and automation tools. Focus primarily on learning the automation tools, but still be familiar with the test management tools. Test management tools. The purpose of test management tools are to store information about how the testing will be done, plan out testing activities, and keep track of the statuses of the testing efforts. The most popular tools for this include Jira, Azure, TestRail, TestPad, and IBM RCLM. Now for automation tools. For automation tools, we have our front end and our back end. Our front end is the UI and interface that you see as a web browser or unit. And then our back end is all the API calls that gets and sends the information. So for our back end, you need to mainly focus on Postman. After focusing on Postman and being able to use that, you can then move over to automation tools for the front end. The most popular tools for the UI include Selenium, Appium, and Catalan. All these tools are very similar. So once you learn one, you can pick up the other ones very easily. Our last part, getting an automation engineer job. So finally, the part you've been waiting for, how to actually apply and get an automation engineer job. This part will require the most patience. Some people get a job right away within the first week or two. Other people could take years. There's a lot of factors that go into it. As I said in the previous QA video, you must also get over your fear of rejection. There's a good chance that when applying to jobs, you'll receive a few rejection letters. That is okay. The most important thing is you cannot become discouraged. You may also have to get a manual QA job first to just get your foot in the door in a company. Then once you're inside a company, you can continue to work on your coding and automation skills, and then you can maneuver and talk your way into an automation engineer spot. For a lot of companies, jobs are often shown to internal personnel first. So if you already work for a company and they're hiring an automation engineer, you can apply to that job first before it's even released to the outside world. And the thing is, what separates you from an outside automation engineer, you already know that company's systems. You know how certain things work in that company already, so it's a less of a learning curve for you when you get that job. If you go the route of becoming a manual QA engineer first, and then try to transition into an automation engineer, talk to the current automation engineers that work at your company. Learn what coding languages that they use. Learn what testing tools that they use. That way you have the insight and all the focus on when you apply for that automation engineer job in the company. Okay, so now here's the full game plan. First, we're gonna update our LinkedIn and our resume. We're gonna put the buzzwords for automation engineer, 
automation testing, QA automation, SDET, a few of those buzzwords should now appear in your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Often recruiters filter for those words. So if you have those words in your profile and resume, you'll get a lot of recruiters reaching out to you. Next, start mass applying for jobs. Apply on websites such as LinkedIn, Indeed, and Monster. If you think you're underqualified for a job, still apply. When they ask you about certain qualifications, show willingness to learn what you don't know. Step three, get interview practice. After your first three, four, or five interviews, you will realize that certain questions get asked no matter what company you're applying for. So work on your responses. That way, with each interview, you're getting better and better and giving yourself a better chance to land that next job. And step four, try websites such as Upwork and Fiverr strictly for projects to put in your resume. If you browse around on these websites, you realize the pay isn't a lot, but the point is not to get rich off these websites, it's just to get relevant experience for automation. Thing is, not even just getting experience, you're getting paid for getting the experience. So it's a double win. You're getting experience you need for better jobs and getting paid in the meantime. Now to wrap it up. There's a good chance that your first job will not be your dream job. Your main focus and purpose is to just get your foot in the door. Every job wants somebody with experience, but no one wants to give you experience to get a job. Once you have your foot in the door, you have leverage now. Then it becomes a lot easier to move around and get better jobs. So remember to just keep patient and continue to work on your skill set. As I said in the beginning, I will make further videos on this YouTube channel discussing in detail every topic brought up in this video. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, please take care. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.